Dearly beloved, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, happy, happy Easter, blessed moment, Easter day. We thank the Lord for these milestone celebration, 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 celebrating our Lord's resurrection, celebrating the Lord's defeat to the enemy, the devil. He dies. And the world thinks that the daughter of the end, look, he is risen. And it's the message of Easter. And so we praise the Lord for his wonder working, that we are here to celebrate the Lord's resurrection. You know, we have been moving about the moment of Lent, the moment of, you know, Passion Week. And now we are here celebrating what the Lord Jesus Christ did. And so we base on what the gospel writers tell us because we were not there, but we read and it is the truth that actually God is written word still speaks. And so we thank God for the Easter story, for the resurrection story, for the triumphant rise of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. Yes, we read from the gospels, Matthew chapter 28. Yes, we read from the gospels, Mark chapter 16, we read from the gospel, Luke chapter 24. And then the other gospel is John chapter 20. They are all talking about the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in Matthew chapter 28, we use it as a basis here that now after the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to look at the grave. Which grave? The grave where the Lord Jesus Christ had been buried. And remember the last people at the grave were these women on a Friday after his burial. And they saw it sealed. They saw it, you know, the stone, huge stone rolled, closing it. And so they knew what it was. So they came to look at it. And in verse 2, the Bible says, And behold, a severe earthquake had occurred, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone and sat upon it. That's a message. The angel coming down, first the earthquake, then the angel coming down, then the angel rolling the stone away, and messageful sitting on it. Praise the Lord. And in verse 3, and at his appearance was the lightning and his clothing as white as snow. The guards, the guards shook for fear. The guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. Messageful became like dead men. And verse 5, the angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know what, I know that you are looking for Jesus who has been crucified. He is not here. That's verse 6. He is not here, for he is risen, just as he said. Come, see the place where he was laying. Go quickly now and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he's going ahead of you. That's verse 7. Into Galilee. There, 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 there. You will see him. Behold, I have told you. Pray the Lord, brethren. This is the message of smile. This is a message of joy. This is a message pleasant to hear. You know, the, this, these people, the world at that time, the season at that time, at his arrest, at his crucifixion, whatever was happening was gloom, was sadness, was agony, was suffering, was, you know, the, the atmosphere itself was bloody. And so everybody 
was downtrodden. Everybody was saddened, including those that arrested Jesus Christ. I don't think they were happy people because it was going to lead into death. You know, even when you are beating someone, of course, the Bible talks about they were, when they were beating him, they were scolding him, they were making jokes about him, they were spitting on him, they were, everything was that kind of situation. But now look, having heard that, the disciples looking at what is happening, some of them going to the extent of denial, like Peter, I do not know the man. Some of them are going to the extent of running away. We are told of a young man that ran and left his cloak, his coat, into the hands of the someone who wanted to grab him. And he's known to have been John Mark. And others, it was a time of no standing. It was a time of no laughing. It was a time of you know, it was so difficult for them. Now look at it today. It's celebration. You see the women coming, the Bible is saying that they came to look at the grave. Because in the first place, when we read this gospels, Matthew, this Matthew here, when he's buried, the Bible says that they sealed it, meaning that they must have put kind of locks put a seal on it that actually nobody, because they weren't spating that actually made at one moment that the disciples would come and steal the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. So they sealed it. And what did they do? Not only the sealing, not only putting a padlock on there, but also put the guards, the soldiers, the most strong, the most awake to keep look, to keep watch. That Because they were saying, lest the disciples these people might come and steal the body. And so they kept watch. But listen to what Matthew is putting to us. Then behold, a severe earthquake had come and the angel of the Lord descending down from heaven and coming and rolling away the huge stone. And on the stone that was rolled, other gospel writers mention that the man who comes to ask for Jesus' body was called Simon. I mean, it was called um, uh, Joseph of Arimathea. He comes and pleads, one of the leaders at that time. And other writers intimate that actually somebody who joined him was Nicodemus who came at night. And you know, the stone huge was rolled by two huge men. It rolled and these people come and seal it. Now the women who come, the resurrection story, the women story, pray the Lord. They come and the Bible says that they came to look at the grave. Now, some other gospel writer would say that they were coming with the spices to anoint the body. But the question that they come with, and that gospel writer is Mark in chapter 16, that they are coming to anoint Jesus' body. Maybe we read it there as well. Yes, we read it there. Mark 16 is a joyful story that actually these women also see in Mark chapter 16 that when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might come and anoint him very early on the first day of the week. They came to the tomb when the sun had risen. They were saying to one another, the question that was rolling in their mind, there were women. In Matthew, we are saying that they, were, they came to look at the grave. In Mark, they come with a question flowing in their minds, which is the question in verse 3. Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? Now, praise the Lord, that looking up in verse 4, they saw the stone had been rolled away, although it was extremely large. So Matthew, Mark explains the, the stone. Looking up, they saw the stone had been rolled away, although it was extremely large. Entering the tomb, 
they saw a young man sitting at the right wearing a white robe and they were amazed. Now the message of the young man is this. And he said to them, do not be afraid. Do not be amazed. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who has been crucified. He has risen. He is not here. Behold, here is the place where they laid him. But go. He also tells them, go and tell his disciples. Pray the Lord, brethren. This message of the resurrection, this message, this story of Easter is a message, is a game changer message. Pray the Lord. Changing the game, changing the situation. And so when you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the one that rose, things change. Agonizing situations will become celebrating situations. Agonizing moments will become celebrating moments in your life. It's just a matter of take, being keen, being committed, remaining there. I remember sharing with you, friends, that the Lord Jesus Christ, when he was entering Jerusalem, even when death was awaiting him, even when suffering was awaiting him, he went because he was purposed. He was intentional. And so in this Christian walk, we are called upon to be intentional. We are called upon to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And so my brothers and sisters, this being written, written about by four, the, all the gospel writers, I have already mentioned Matthew chapter 28, mentioned Mark 16, Luke 24, and John 20. It was an important story. A story that brings back life. Can I say bringing back life? A story that brings back that which many people thought was lost. And so we celebrate recovery, praise the Lord. We celebrate come back, come back, rebouncing back. You know, people talk about many things. You may be down today. You may be downtrodden today. You may be downcast today. But this is a recovery story. Salvation, I mean, Easter story is a recovery story. Despair was flying everywhere, like I've already explained. So the resurrection was the hope bringer. Hope bringer. So, brethren, when you see me smiling, when you see me laughing and feeling good about this story, it is a hope bringer. Just like these women, you have read about them. Mary Magdalene, Mary, the other one, whom the Matthew mentioned, the other Mary, but here Mark says, Mary, the mother, the mother of James, and the Solomon, women coming. And I want to tell you that actually, as we read the women coming, slowly, and walking and wandering in Mark chapter 16, who will roll away the stone for us. Now, when they came out of the, of the tomb, after the young man said, go, and even in Matthew chapter 13, when they said, go, when we, looked, when we read Luke and John, these women went running, celebration, singing, and to take good news to share with somebody. Have you ever had some good news? And you are itching to share with someone? Is it passing your grades? Is it getting a job? And you have somebody whom you say, yes, I've gotten this, a success, victory. You want to share with someone. And so the resurrection story is just exactly like that. You want to share with somebody. The good news. So these women running, getting out of the tomb, going to meet the hiding disciples hiding Peter, hiding John, hiding Andrew, hiding whoever, and they come and share the good news. So friends, what do you have? What news do you have? Salvation news that you have, share it. But also boils down to other things that we have. There are people who wish you well. Share with them. Run and share with someone. Mary, Mary and Solomon, 
they run to share with somebody. So we need to share some good news, friends. We need to share some good news. People, so there are some people who hurry to share only the bad news. It's people hurry with the sad news. You go to the social media, something that happens, sad news, I mean, is it spoiling somebody? Is it writing bad things about somebody? It spreads like bushfire. The world is getting less and less and less with good news. It's a story we are called upon to share some good news. The news that will bring celebration, the news that will bring cheers, the news that will uplift somebody. The hiding disciples needed uplifting. The women ran with the news uplifting them. I saw this story of the Easter uplifting news. Hope that had been cut down because of the crucifixion. Read Luke 24. There were men who were going to a village called a mouse. When you read 24 of Luke, you hear them mention, when they were walking, Jesus draws because he's a resurrected Lord and he walks along with them. Now, what amazes me is what they say, that Luke, we had thought that this man would be the one to liberate Israel. We had hoped. Now, many people, even now, walk with the news we had hoped. But while someone is there, they attach little importance to him. When someone is available, they attach little relevance to the person. But it is after someone has gone, when you know that someone is no longer there, this is when you begin to say, oh, 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 we had hoped, oh, we had hoped. But while someone is there, some people see no importance. This is derived from Luke chapter 24 that I'm talking about, the mouse journey, the mouse journey. We need to remember that this is one of the critical messages that we get from this mouse journey. When they said we had hoped that he would be Hmm? We had hoped that we would be, he would be the one to save our people. He was a prophet, you know, you know, and he, he, was, he was a great man. But while he was alive, some people could not see his greatness. Some people could not see his relevance. But after he leaves, this is when the people realize. So the resurrected Lord resurrects great things. And so for me, I have a message from this story that cuts across that when we read about this, the empty tomb is a story. And that one shows that actually the Lord Jesus Christ defeated the powers of death. He defeated death. And since he's a conqueror, praise the Lord. And since he's a victor, praise the Lord. Since he overcame he promises us that we shall also overcome. Those who trust in him, those who believe in him, he's an overcomer. Our Lord Jesus Christ is an overcomer. And so I am confident as I speak this message that I am also an overcomer. You can also be an overcomer because you trust and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. So the angel's presence, the earthquake presence, making the soldiers look like they are dead men. You know, there are some things that, that entangle, that tie us, that hold on to us. And they hold. Sometimes they can be fellow human beings. Sometimes they can be colleagues. Sometimes they can be family members. Sometimes they can be, when they have tied you, they have pulled you down, they have held you there. Listen to me. The earthquake of our Lord Jesus Christ the angelic presence of the Lord Jesus Christ coming down, you only have to be still and know that the Lord is with you. And I speak this with confidence that the guards that kept at Jesus' tomb falling down and becoming like dead men, I pray that whatever is holding you down, that whatever is holding you captive, be set, you be set free in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That the situation will be like these dead men 
this 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 men lying down here that they become like dead men may the situation look like a dead man may whatever look like so that you not have the power to hold you down anymore so that you have not the power to hold you at zero anymore but your business will uplifted your job will be uplifted your status will be uplifted your family will be uplifted your church will be uplifted because we have entangling forces so we need to put on friends ready for action like the women and praise the lord by the way pray the lord friends that actually the resurrection story is a women's story we talk about women emancipation but listen to me the resurrection story is a women emancipation story because they become the first evangelists and they run the men hiding peter hiding andrew hiding whoever they are hiding bartholomew name them thomas where is he the one who said yes until i touch until listen to me the women come with a message so we are praying that may the lord jesus christ uphold the women as well during our generation to come with a message uplifting message in our home in our homes in our house mommy dad mommy sister come with a message to your brother to your sister i mean to your brother to your father because we also need to be encouraged the men need to be encouraged listen these women ran with a message to peter and other apostle disciples his reason his reason and may that be the message for you may that be the message for me so christ's resurrection like we have already said is about freeing the enslaved freeing setting free things that have bound us in chains look at lazarus you see jesus had done the resurrection of lazarus and people thought actually it was it was a joke of things but when the the sisters took jesus to the tomb and lazarus had been tied there in robes and when he commanded that we read in john chapter 11 praise the lord and jesus tells, tells them that actually come out and lazarus comes out but still tied and jesus said, set him free and then tied and tie him and let him go so we pray that actually this resurrection story you'll be untied you'll be set free praise the lord that whatever is entangling you whatever is tying you whatever stone that is standing at your way of success the women came asking who rolled away the stone for us and this is a story of victory by the time they lifted up their eyes the stone had been rolled away i'm also praying for you that whatever was holding you that whatever was tying you that was, was what, whatever was being held captive you have searched for that job for years you have searched by the way even those that want to get married you see someone grows there no man or no woman of course there are there are so many but the right one we pray that actually the door god opens the door for you there are people that have prayed over something over years but this resurrection story of this year of this moment we are praying that actually jesus christ sets you free and the bible said actually when the son of god sets you free you are free indeed and so the resurrection story was the king was the game changer changer jesus changed the things the mood changer the mood changer pray the lord mood changer the one of fear the one of despair on friday the one of fear the one of despair the one of hopelessness on friday sunday morning cheers sunday morning singing sunday morning rise up and run activity morning and may your house be an activity house may your workplace be an activity you know may your church be an activity church activity morning running with good news good news good news good news and we pray that actually good news surround you so the resurrection of our lord jesus christ is 
the game changer, and we pray that this Lord Jesus Christ will give you hope, will give you joy, will give you peace, will give you cheers in your heart. Even those that are sick, we pray that the Lord rejuvenates your bodies, rejuvenates your health, and so that you see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And so, friends, I just want to end with two things. One, the guards put at the tomb. For what? The man whom they thought was dead was dead. So guard for what? Now, we pray that actually God will release his power to set you free. To set you free, to set me free from whatever entanglements, for whatever, you know, huge stones that are lying at my way. May God open. May God open. Number two, as I finish, the women going and they're asking, who will roll away the stone for us? I just want to end by saying, looking up, the stone is rolled away. And I pray that your stone, your barrier, your impediment be rolled away. May God, who rose the Lord Jesus Christ, who sent an earthquake to shake the earth, who sent his angel to roll away the stone and sat on it, may you sit on your situation and say, yes, you're a victor. May God bless you and watch over you. Happy Easter. Celebrate, but thinking about the moments when the Lord Jesus Christ shows the record, it is defeat to the devil, it is defeat to the enemy. May you emerge victorious in your situation. Emerge victorious. Emerge victorious. Look up. Look up. And may your stone be rolled away in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>